The phoenix has risen from the ashes of Holden, and its name is Silverado. The hubris, right, the sheer presumptuous audacity required to pull this one off with a sense of complete conviction, well, it really is weapons grade. Like, never mind the past, let's just put that behind us if you're still compensating. The new Silverado is ready for you. <laughs> I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. The website for that, obviously, but now, if you've been dead from the neck up for the past five to ten, here's the backstory. A wolf called GM, dressed up as a sheep, called Holden, not that there's anything wrong with that, dicened up billions from the Australian taxpayer, which would be you, and grossly misrepresented its commitment to continue local manufacturing here in Shitsville before shuttering the factory anyway and telling anyone dumb enough to listen that this was not just OK, but in fact an excellent result. Shortly thereafter, of course, the entire Holden business model fell over in slow-mo because every product they attempted to introduce was either emphatically crap or irrelevant or, of course, both. And they opted out of the nation unceremoniously, but not before administering a properly unlubricated barbed wire enema to its vestigial dealer network, which was most entertaining to watch, a parting gift of sorts in the time-honoured tradition of the most acrimonious relationship breakups ever. <laughs> this final coffin nail process was described as, quote, incredibly reckless at a Senate inquiry by Australian Automotive Dealer Association Chief Jimbo Slarty Bartfast whose real name is, of course, James Vortman. But I like my nickname better because he does look to me rather like a Viking with that bold new beard. I could see him sitting next to Odin and Thor in Valhalla, shooting the shit and singing a few cold ones, like, easily. General Motors seems to be a law unto themselves and are the epitome of a large, powerful offshore multinational using its position of power to exploit the smaller businesses it deals with. They have set a very dangerous precedent. That was only back in August, so fairly recent history. Holden's rigor mortis is only just setting in today. Stern words indeed from Jimbo, but my sympathy factor here absolute zero. It's quite strange to me that car dealers take it so damn personally when they are themselves treated in the manner that they routinely treat their customers. Like, come on. What grounds are there really here for being indignant in these circumstances? Riddle me that. The whole process, watching it as a spectator, was like bastardry Inception, the movie, like bastardry babushka. Whatever. It was great. Anyway, lividity is only just evident vis-a-vis -vis the corpse of Holden and now Silverado. It seems to me that anything orbiting GM is like finding a viper's nest inside a turd mine. It's kind of exciting and engaging, but not necessarily pleasant or what you were hoping for. Fast forward just 10 or 12 weeks and meet Joanne Stogianis, the director of Holden 2.0, or as I like to call her, Big Stodge. Hi, I'm Joanne Stogianis, director of GM Specialty Vehicles, or as we often refer to, GMSV, in Australia and New Zealand. Minor point of order on all of this, okay? At the risk of sounding like Yobbo Yoda, there is no Australia. Like, what is that? According to our constitution, only two national pride pronunciations are acceptable. There's the way Her Royal Highness Liz Regina would say it, like, Australia, as in, to make Australia less shit. For when you're, you know, dealing with matters of great national import. 
or there's the more conversational Australia, in which the first A is silent, like as is of course the U. We invite customers to use our new locator dealer tool on gmspecialtyvehicles.com. Agreed. If you are seduced over to the GMSV dark side, you will need to go online and locate the nearest GMSV dealer tool. Apparently there's like uh, 55 of them or something spread across Australia and of course Sheep Shagistan. No guarantee they've turned over any kind of new leaf on the service and support front, however. So there's that. Big Stodge went on to say this in the official press release. Retardistani trucks are redefining the ute market in Australia and Sheep Shagistan. Respectfully, must I disagree here on this one. Silverado sales approximate zero at this point, right? So the absolute redefinition of the segment possible there from Silverado is zero. Jury's out on the future. Anything might happen, but probably not. The Ram is, of course, just like the Silverado, only with different hair and makeup kind of thing. Very hard indeed, I think, for those aliens probing us so routinely from orbit to tell those two trucks apart with their advanced sensors. Last year was Ram's first full year on sale here in Australia. 2,868 sales within a 4x4 dual cab market of nearly 170,000 units. And frankly, I struggle to see how a market share of 1.7% for retardistani trucks could constitute any kind of quote-unquote redefinition of a friggin' segment. Like, if your share portfolio goes up by 1.7% in one year, you've hardly redefined your wealth, have you? At least that's how it seems to me. These vehicles are at best niche. And that's all they will ever be. They're kind of overhyped and mostly irrelevant. It's quite okay to like them. I mean, that's allowed. You can lust after them. You can even buy one. Nobody's going to have a problem with that, although it might not be the smartest course of action. The Silverado and Ram party trick is, of course, its 4.5 ton alleged tow capacity. And this is going to attract some people, clearly. It just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? 4.5 tons. Yes. I'm in, as Jeep would probably say. The Silverado is one amazing truck. It leads the category in towing technology, providing Australian and New Zealand customers with the ultimate towing machine. Now let's take a closer look at America's favourite truck. It redefines towing and all-round capability and boasts seriously advanced technology, safety and comfort. In Silverado's case, this is possible only if you fit a 70mm tow ball and limit yourself to 422 kilos of download. But this is a vehicle that weighs two and a half tonnes, okay? So it's actually 200 kilos lighter than a Land Cruiser 200 Sahara. It's lighter. If you think, therefore, it's a good idea to tow a four and a half ton trailer with a vehicle such as this, literally a lightweight in comparison with the trailer, I would submit that you are functionally insane or at best staggeringly out of touch with the physics in practice. Trailers with a centralised axle group like single tandem or triple axle pig trailers are fundamentally unstable in both yaw and pitch. And I'm talking caravans, boats, horse floats and campers and trailers of that nature, okay? They're pig trailers with centralised axles. They rely on the underlying stability of the towing vehicle in order to remain stable in yaw and in pitch. And it's kind of important that they do stay controlled in those planes. So... When the pig is four and a half tons, which is nearly 80% heavier than the Silverado, it's very easy for the Miss Piggy to nudge the vehicle around at friggin' highway speeds, and the tail thus wags the dog. And I do mean dog. Catastrophically, right? Especially in your. This is fundamentally unsafe and almost impossible to mitigate. I guess... 
Thankfully, the four and a half ton tow limit in Silverado is largely bullshit, like in practice. See, gross combination mass for Silverado is 7,000 160 kilos. And I'm getting this data from their website, you know, the one with the locate a dealer tool function. Take away four and a half tons for the heaviest trailer and 2,540 kilos for the curb mass, and you are left with just 120 kilos for the total payload in those circumstances. That's when you are towing a four and a half ton trailer. I know some caravanners who would overload the vehicle just by climbing aboard to drive it. Certainly this is not a his and hers towing proposition, right? In the immortal words of renowned social philosopher Bon Scott, ain't no fairy story, ain't no skin and bones, but you give it all you got, weighing in at 19 stone. Yes. That's from the Insulin Resistant Caravan Owners National Anthem, 1977, from the double platinum album, Taking a Dump Out There. Yes. Do consider all this, won't you, before spending like 140 grand on a friggin' Silverado and a similar amount on an acoustically transparent palatial pig trailer chitois on wheels, which some people still call a caravan. I put it to you that... GMSV and Silverado is a kind of heavy towing confidence trick from a slightly different leopard wearing pretty much the same old Detroit pattern spots, the stick and move, talking up the ultimate irrelevant niche vehicle and almost getting the details right. Yes. But even so, I expect some people, generally real men, to get wood interacting with their Silverados. There's a real man right there, getting wood, interacting with his Silverado. So it is possible, a concept the Ming Moles and I put to the test, repeatedly, earlier. It's so helpful. That can-do commitment, I've got to admire that. You know, nothing is too much trouble for a Ming Mole on a mission. If you actually think, right, that buying into this concept, this GMSV concept, if you think that's a good idea, I am kind of motivated to inquire, what color is the sky on your world? But in mitigation, I've got to say that Big Stodge seems rather nice indeed, even refreshingly sincere, and that's rare enough in corner offices of this nature. And it is fundamentally true what she says. GMSV does have a rather kick-ass online locate a dealer tool. More car makers should do that now that I think about it. An upliftingly rare and serendipitously honest find from where I toil daily down here, deep in the turd mine. 